An AFC West Divisional Showdown at home does not go the Denver Broncos' way as the offense, the defense, and everybody struggles in a loss at home to the Las Vegas Raiders. What's next for the Broncos' short week with the Cleveland Browns matchup Thursday Night Football? We break it down on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome back into a brand new episode of Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast here on the Lockdown NFL Network, your team every day from the South Stands to the end zone. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke. Join alongside my co-host, Sarah Bettinger. Both of us cover the Denver Broncos for the Lockdown NFL Network and Nine News. Sarah, my friend, I tell you what, being at the game, the atmosphere pregame, the atmosphere during the game was great until everything went downhill in the first quarter, my man. Can't wait to break down all the action with you. I know a lot of Broncos country is fired up. They're angry, and rightfully so. They have every right. Yeah, down. we're going to break this thing down just like the Broncos secondary, you know, just breaking down all over the place. It's unfortunate to, to see, you know. It's it's tough to watch. Uh, it's tough to take in. It's absolutely a bitter pill to have to swallow. But, man, as we talked about kind of after that Steelers game, it really feels like everything's going just – it's going to a certain place that we all can kind of inevitably – see at this point now you're three and three on this young season still 11 games left and you got a chance here on Thursday night football to turn it around and get to four and three but I can only imagine if the Broncos do beat the Cleveland Browns on Thursday night football everybody's just gonna be wondering well why couldn't they win one of those three games against the Ravens the Steelers or the Raiders and you know actually have a shot at this but Man, it, it's a tough, tough loss, especially being the first division game of the year, your third straight loss in the AFC to another opponent that's going to contend for the postseason. Uh, it, it it hurts big time. It does. And, you know, there was a lot of Broncos country. I mean, I sat in the stands. As you can see, I got beat. You know, the Broncos got beat on Sunday. I got beat by the sun. I am just burnt all over. So, you know, forgive me for this Broncos country if I look like I'm red like a tomato. I, I'm not mad. I'm just, you know, the sun just kicked my ass on Sunday. But, you know, I, I think the big thing, Sarah, here, looking back, the Broncos, you know, in this game, they come out and they, they tie it up 7-7. Seven, seven. Obviously, the first drive, Henry Ruggs has a touchdown catch on a third and two. And, and then Teddy Bridgewater, the Broncos offense, they go downfield. Tim Patrick scores the touchdown. Touchdown. It was a little electric there. You're like, okay, hey, look, they, they reacted. They finally got their first opening drive touchdown in the last 24 games. That's mm-hmm. 24 games of the Pat Shermer era, by the way. And all of a sudden, things opened up a little bit. But then, just the theme, defense, giving up big play after big play. And, Sarah, it's coming through areas we didn't expect. When we look at this Broncos roster, no doubt about it. There is talent all across the board, but... In the secondary, you're giving up big plays downfield. You're getting burnt for big time touchdowns. I, I, I was very, very, I, I don't want to say like shocked, but it was definitely perplexing to say at least considering what we've seen. There's an issue right now, and I don't want to say this is an issue on him, but there's an issue when your first round rookie cornerback is your best looking DB on the field. That says a lot, and especially with a veteran secondary. It's a huge issue to me. Uh, I looked it up after the game because you know i get to write about this stuff too and i looked it up over 43 million dollars uh against this year's salary cap alone on just the secondary and of course when things are going bad we got to look for all these different areas and places to place the blame in my opinion the one spot of this entire team that should be absolutely lights out every single game is the secondary and i think that we can point a lot of the blame to the defensive struggles on the offensive ineptitude, but at the same time, we expect the secondary to be excellent. We expect the secondary to be great. We expect them at the very least to not be giving up these huge plays every single week. I I feel like I could go through them all in my head from week one, Darius Slayton to this 51 yard uh, catch and run that we just saw from Brian Edwards a few hours ago. So, I, I mean, these, these things are happening one after the other. And at some point, Cody, it's something's got to give. I mean, they've got to get into better position. They've got to stop dropping the safety into the box and keep the two high shell and keep those guys back or something. I don't know what they're going to be able or have to do, but it's getting to be embarrassed. I mean, the Broncos are getting embarrassing. I saw a few national people bring up the fact that the Broncos had the highest paid secondary in the league and Derek Carr's out there carving them up. And, and, and it's just embarrassing. It's, it's tough to watch. That should be the one area of the team that we can hang our hat on every single week. And right now, it's, it's arguably the biggest problem area on the team. 
Yeah, for the last three weeks. And, and even more concerning, too, the Broncos given up 30-plus points in the last three weeks is very, very concerning. But, you know, you talk about keeping the two safeties back there. I, I feel like it's going to be even harder now because – Alexander Johnson left this game with a pec injury and the fear is that it could be a torn pectoral muscle similar to Josie Jewell, which means that if that's the case, he'll be out for the entire season, which means you have Justin Sternod and then you can have Micah Kaiser, who's going to probably have to get the start at inside linebacker, not to mention you lose Baron Browning due to a concussion in this game too. He more than likely wouldn't even be ready for Thursday night football if that were the case. So the Broncos banged up and I, I go back to it as well. Look, press conferences, you, you talk to players, you hear from them, you get to see all these different reactions but even Justin Simmons says look I'm excited because we have an opportunity to turn this around we have an opportunity to go out there and play football and get better and we can't feel sorry for ourselves and look Von Miller is very candid as well with the postgame media said look it's on me I've got to get better I've got to find a way to get to the quarterback that's going to get us more interceptions he says if it work if I fix it if I fix the areas that aren't going right with me it'll trickle down to the entire team you have to hope that they can have an inspired performance look you're going into a matchup this upcoming Thursday against a banged up Cleveland team that lost Kareem Hunt Nick Chubb was not in the game on Sunday for them, and he may be questionable for this game, but you lose Kareem Hunt. There, there's no excuse as to why the Broncos can't go out there and compete, especially against a, bank, a banged-up Baker Mayfield, but it, it goes deeper than just the players executing. Sarah, we're seeing the Broncos get picked apart on a lot of things in the last three weeks out of their base defense, and it seems like the strength that we thought they'd have with man coverage is not a strength right now. It does. It does seem that way, and those players are absolutely right. They've got an opportunity to really turn things around. I, I'm really, I, I'm really concerned about what you just mentioned, though. The fact of Alexander Johnson's injury kind of coinciding with the need to keep the safeties back, and and look, we brought it up on an entire episode that wound up being kind of a waste of our time talking about Avery Williamson getting an additional opportunity. But man, what a mistake that now looks like to let him go to the Tennessee Titans. I don't know that necessarily they had a ton of control over that, but man. Sign into the active roster. Make 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 a better use of your roster spots than you currently are. We saw Garrett Bowles go down with an injury, and I still haven't seen Cam Fleming touch the field this season. So I, I'm concerned, as you are, Cody, with the, the lack of the ability to man, play man coverage defensively, now the lack of ability to keep the safeties back given Alexander Johnson's injury and the need for really Kareem Jackson to be playing in the box. So it, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough, but they've got a chance, man. I think Von Miller himself he he had one of his best pass rush reps that I've seen this season, and Henry Ruggs ended up catching a forty plus yard pass downfield on the play. Derek Carr got hit hard on that play by Von Miller, I'm pretty sure. So it, it, it's tough, man. It, it it stinks and it's brutal to watch. It's tough. It's it's tough to have to be in this position. After six weeks, thinking, "Whoa, we had a three and zero start at the beginning of the year, and now here we are." Like you said, giving up thirty plus points in three games, you know, going up against three AFC opponents and dropping all three of those contests. Now you got a now you got a chance. You got to get back on the saddle some way or another. You have no time to feel sorry for yourself, you know. And the unfortunate thing is, you know, we get to see here, we get to cover the team, which is a blessing. And being able to interact with Broncos country at the game was fantastic. Uh, but you know, we talked about the defense, some of the plays to give up. Come on up here in just a moment, both Sarah. And and myself, we're going to talk about the Broncos offense because there are some gleaming issues here. Once again, do not let the stat box or the, the score sheet confuse you. There is a lot of issues that need to be addressed. We're going to talk about that coming up here in just a moment. But before I do that, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's episode. Show it's our good friends over there at DirecTV Stream. Now, does this sound familiar for you? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows, and you're watching sports highlights on your phone, and you've got your neighbor's best friend's dog's log in for your sports highlights and all the other good stuff out there. Well, I want to tell you about a way you can get all that in one place, and that is with Direct TV Stream. And they bring you your live and on-demand television favorites and sports and movies like never before, all in one place, and it is easy to access on the go or at home. Direct TV Stream, that means no more juggling the remote, no more need to buy another device ever again, and the best part, there is no annual contract. So you can get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream today. And go to directtv.com. That's directtv.com, and you can learn more about it today. A compatible device is required, and content varies by package. 
All right, Sarah, jumping into the second half action on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos postgame report. The Broncos dropped 34-24 to at home to the Las Vegas Raiders. We talked about the defense being a massive letdown, but Sarah, I think what was a bigger letdown in my eyes, just even being around Broncos country for this matchup, Mike Shanahan was honored at halftime for his induction to the Broncos Ring of Fame. Steve Atwater was honored with his Ring of Fame at pregame. And to, to be honest with you, going back and seeing those key guys, guys that took pride in beating the Las Vegas Raiders and Mike Shanahan having it saying, hey, at halftime, even though you're down you know, 17-7, to let's go beat the Raiders. Mike Shanahan... We, I don't think we've ever saw this from a Mike Shanahan coach football team. There's some issues right now on the coaching side. And look, Vic Fangio in his postgame press conference had said he was asked a question about, is he going to make any significant coaching changes this week, including maybe himself? He said, no, no head coach will go out in a press conference and will say, well, I'm going to get rid of, you know, we're, we may have to overhaul yeah. the offensive staff because this is after a game. Those decisions will come between he and the top level with George Payton. And there will be a conversation with the person that they plan to relieve and it could happen it very well could happen but they're not going to do that immediately after a game and they're not going to say that in a press conference it's not how the business operation is done we get fans frustration on it but Sarah looking at the offensive side of the ball I wanted to point something out here Denver in this game they lose by 10 points but they control the time of possession pretty significantly in this matchup. Now, I think for me, the, the most concerning part about this, when you look at the total number of plays that have been running this game for the Broncos versus the Raiders, the Broncos, they had 421 yards of offense on 77 plays, averaging 5.5 yards per play. When you look at Las Vegas Raiders, 426 yards of offense, and they ran 52 offensive plays, and they were averaging 8.2 yards per attempt, whether it be on the ground with the run game. When you get Kenyon Drake involved, that was a little bit of a surprise here as a receiver where you have a one-on-one matchup with Alexander Johnson and Drake in a one-on-one with a wheel route. That was just right before halftime too. There are so many coaching mishaps that I think we could pinpoint on. Obviously players have to execute, but a lot of this, the Broncos for the third week in a row have been out coached there. Which is crazy because the Raiders coach resigned earlier, you know, earlier in the week. So fancy that. I mean, they, they were able to still come out and be the better coach team without their coach. So that's, that is insane. And that shouldn't be acceptable. I mean, George Payton and all those in charge have to be looking at this. Mike Shanahan was the best coach on the field today, Cody. And I, I say that in jest, but man, uh, didn't it have everybody kind of wishing for Mike Shanahan to just, you know, strap on a headset and go out there and start calling plays or something. I mean, that's the way this game felt. And when, you know, when the Broncos offense took the field, of course, it felt early on like, well, maybe they hit some kind of stride. They ran their scripted plays extremely well. They converted a long third down on that first drive, and they answered the Raiders, which was great to see. It was awesome, and it felt like, okay, well, here we go. Maybe this is maybe maybe the offense is picking up some steam, but then it just turned out to kind of be all of the same stuff. And I would say, for me, Cody. Teddy Bridgewater easily played his worst game of the season. And I was writing that in an article in the third quarter. And then he threw another interception later in the game. So three interceptions in this game, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, and a fumble loss. So four turnovers just from Teddy B on his own. And of course he was pitched as the guy that was going to be efficient. That was going to take care of the football. That was going to protect the ball. You know, he's Teddy two gloves for a reason. He wears those two gloves to, to get a better grip on the football. And obviously that's not helping him very much in the last couple of weeks. It's, it's just a shame to see he's been inaccurate with his deep throws. He, he's not finding guys in stride often enough in the earlier portion of the game. The Broncos offense is stalling out significantly because Teddy Bridgewater oftentimes is holding the ball way too long. Yeah. He's taking these deep drops and then he's stepping up in the pocket. He's scanning the field. And of course, a few occasions we've seen that really work out for him. And we, we brag on the fact, well, he's getting to his fourth or fifth read on this play. And that's great until you're getting hit 17 times in the game. And that's not an exaggeration. That's the literal stat. The Raiders hit Teddy Bridgewater 17 times in this game. And all the, all the fans on Twitter want to drop into our mentions and be like, well, Sarah, well, Cody, that's the offensive lines problem. Watch the game and watch it again. It's not the offensive line that's causing all these hits. It's Teddy Bridgewater holding the ball for 30 seconds every time he drops back. So the offensive issues definitely, in my opinion, start with Pat Shermer, but but the buck definitely doesn't stop there. It, it goes on to Teddy Bridgewater, and then you see lackluster effort from certain guys throughout the game. And I'm just going to say it with guys like Sutton and Fant. It, it doesn't seem like their effort was there early in the game. It picked up as the game went along, but – 
that 50 50 shot that Cortland Sutton had an opportunity at late in the game. I mean, underthrown ball by Teddy Bridgewater, poorly thrown ball. So Cortland Sutton's got to catch that ball, man. That's what he's he's in a contract here. That's his ball. So that's my that's my rant on the offense, Cody. It's tough to watch, that's for sure. Well, I, I can tell you they're just being in the stadium, watching these players too. And look, I, I think that having a seat in the stadium is probably the best vantage point too from the TV. You know, you get a little bit of a TV broadcast up on the, the Jumbotron there. But, you know, I think that looking at guys, I just felt like there's a lot of discouragement. A lot of these players are discouraged because, look, you know it as well as I do. Cortland Sutton early on in this game had a big time opportunity for a touchdown, and Teddy just sailed it way past where he could get it. That was frustrating because he got right behind Casey Hayward. We're sitting there in the stands. And we're looking. Oh, the court's open. He's got him. And then all of a sudden, it's just in front of him. Just so many, so many of those plays happened here. The Broncos' rushing offense too. Javante Williams had a couple of really good plays. The run game was going early on with Melvin Gordon. But then when you find yourselves down, and I think a lot of it really kind of trickled down in a snowball effect in a negative way. When the Broncos decided to go for it on fourth down, and look, fourth and one, I, I like the aggressiveness. I like the fact that you want to go for it. But the play design. I didn't like that play design. That led to Teddy's first Terrible. interception. On that play with the run game going the way that it was, why not try to run the ball again with Melvin Gordon or Javante Williams? <laughs> I think they can get one yard in that situation. But the Broncos' offense has become very predictable, Sarah. I don't think any changes are going to happen this week because it's a short week. But don't color me shocked if the Broncos make an offensive coordinator change after the Cleveland game if the offense continues to struggle. Because don't look at 24 points, Broncos country, and say, hey, well, they scored 24 points. That's because they're playing against a defense there that was less aggressive, that played so far off the ball, playing a lot of cover three, and they allowed them to creep back into it. The stats are very misleading if you look at the box score. So I encourage Broncos country, don't do that. But, Sarah, I think the biggest thing for me – they had to find a concerted way to run the football. I mean, how many times is this a week in a row? This is week six in a row of us coming here on the podcast and saying, hey, the Broncos need to find a way to run the football. I mean, it's becoming a little bit tiresome having to say the same things here, but it's so true. This is a team, Sarah, and I, and I was talking with a lot of Broncos. I actually had a Raiders fan that was sitting right next to me and my fiance. And he's like, man, the, the Broncos have too much talent in terms of players to be this bad. And I agree. They are way too talented to look the way that they are, to play the way that they are. That's the biggest disappointment to me. And I think to everyone else, like going into this season, I think even, even the more pessimistic portion of Broncos country would have agreed the roster looks way better on paper. And it does. And it did. And it still does. It's still a very good roster on paper in my opinion even with some of the injuries that they've had the defense is very good on paper the offense like you said especially at the running back position unfortunately now we're in a position where it's like do we start firing up the trade rumor mill for a guy like melvin gordon who's in a contract year and think about getting him off to another team and getting some value in return for him instead of hey we have this great potential two-headed monster that, you know, I was I was kind of hoping for, you know, both of these guys against a weaker run defense to run for 100 yards each in this game. Unfortunately, it just didn't work out that way. But you're absolutely right, Cody, that that portion of it, the roster talent is is the most frustrating thing, I think. And, and people kind of, you know, when Teddy Bridgewater won the starting job, I think everybody's expectations were a bit tempered. You know, it was OK, well, Teddy Bridgewater is a veteran guy. Remember all the we know what he is talk and, the, and those things like that. And of, unfortunately, he's kind of proven that accurate in the last few weeks. But the, the, the important thing was that everybody agreed the Broncos have talent. They can they can win games with talent if they just play efficient. If Teddy Bridgewater, like we said in the first three weeks, if Teddy Bridgewater plays like this for the rest of the season, the Broncos are going to win a lot of games. Unfortunately, he's regressed to the point that right now it's like, are the Broncos going to win any game? I mean, uh, unfortunately, you look at the matchups and it's just like if they play like this on offense, they can't beat anybody. They're going to get beat every week, and especially if they keep giving up big plays defensively on top of it all. So it, it's that's the most grueling part of this is the talent on both sides of the ball. And now Jerry Judy coming back in a couple weeks, we'll see what happens. Will it be too little too late for the Broncos by the time he gets back? Will they already be three and four and thinking about, you know, calling it you know we're sellers at the trade deadline we'll see what happens 
Well, and we're actually going to talk about that in a later episode this week here, Locked on Broncos. Should the Broncos be buyers at the trade deadline? But coming up here in just a moment, it's a short week, a short turnaround for this football team. No time to dwell. You got to burn the tape now. You got to watch it, review. You got to grow, and now you got to prepare for the Cleveland Browns. We're going to talk about what's next for this team coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, folks, let me tell you about the two other sponsors of today's episode, Post Game Report, and that's our good friends over there at Built Bar and Betterline. And Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar on the market today. They have protein bars that have 17 grams of protein. 130 calories and only four grams of sugar and i got myself a brand new box of churro puff which is now no longer available on built.com but they have a wide variety of like apple almond crisp and other mm -hmm. coconut almonds so you want to be sure to check that out at built.com amongst the nine amazing delicious flavors including the occasional limited time flavor you can get you and your family a box today at built.com and once again you can use promo code lock 15 and that's going to get you 15 percent off your next order at built.com once again promo code lock 15 gets you 15 percent off your next order at built.com and our good friends over there, betonline.ag. We are on to week seven. The Broncos have to play on Thursday night football against the Cleveland Browns, and all eyes are on that matchup. And that is betonline.ag, the number one source for all things professional and college football with a new updated site and interface. They make it easy for you to find all the updated odds, contest information, and props at betonline.ag, the number one source for all things football. So head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Don't forget to use promo code LOCKDOWN to receive that bonus here today from football, basketball, boxing, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. BetOnline, the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. BetOnline, where the game begins. All right, Sarah. Where do the Denver Broncos go from here? I, I feel like this is going to be a very fun episode in the comment section here on YouTube, so make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news, content, and coverage. But I... Going out of the stadium, look, and I've, I've met some really awesome Broncos country fans that recognize I was wearing the fil Don't Be a Filthy Casual t-shirt, which has no negative connotation, by the way. I know that there's some fans that were upset about the Filthy Casual t-shirt. It, it's not a big deal. It all goes to charity. But uh, outside of that, Sarah, I, I think the common consensus from a lot of the fan base is, hey, this is the same team that we've seen in 2019, 2020, and here in 2021, and rightfully so. I think we're starting to see that creep in. And look, in a situation like this, I, I don't think I've ever seen the breaking point here for the fan base in the Vic Fangio era except now. But you're going to hear this noise all week. You're going to hear it on talk radio. You're going to hear it in the newspapers. Coaches got to go. As If you're a player, sir, what are you thinking about this week knowing that, okay, hey, look, we just played here on Sunday. We get Monday to maybe come in and go through recovery. We're not going to get Tuesday off because Tuesday is normally our off day. We have to come in and practice. And on Wednesday, we have to come in and practice because Thursday we have a primetime game. This is the downside of a short week, not to mention when you're a struggling football team right now. It is. And and I think as a player, you got to be thinking, well, the other team's got the same problem right now, you know, and, and especially with Cleveland, like you mentioned, they're really banged up. Who knows if Baker Mayfield's even going to play in this game? It might be the Case Keenum revenge game, right? Oh, my uh, goodness. Could you imagine so the storylines if that's the case here this week? Uh, oh, pun intended. I didn't even mean that, case, but yes. Hey, yeah. Uh, I mean, case closed. If that, if the Broncos lose to Case Keenum in Cleveland, I mean, that is that that would be the icing on the cake for all of this. But if you're if you're a player, you're going into this, you got to be thinking like, well, basically nobody has seen us play yet this year, right? I mean, nobody other than maybe the Ravens game. I don't think any of the Broncos games have been nationally televised or like America's Game of the Week or anything like that. So. It's not like they've been given a primetime slot. So now you got a chance to go up against a pretty good Cleveland roster and, and make a statement. And so that's what I think this Broncos team needs to do. I think they need to be playing really loose in this game. I, I, that's what's been killing me is that they look like they're playing so tight. They look like they're playing so just like we're trying so hard to do that. And that's that's where you get Teddy Bridgewater overthrowing Cortland Sutton on the deep route and you get him overthrowing him on the – you know, the out towards the sideline and different things like that. And it's just, it, it feels so tight. It feels like every play is like, is, is third down. And if, you know, if you don't hit on first down, well, we might as well punt because they're not going to convert on second and nine because we know they're going to run the ball and then they're going to throw it on third and eight and they're not going to get it. That's just how it feels right now. It feels like everything is so tight. It feels like the players know that. You got to find a way to come out in this game and come out loose, come out confident, just erase that you're starting fresh. You're O and O. You you got nothing nothing on the record at this point. Come out come out fresh. You got a whole new eleven game slate 
to kind of get things restarted and rebooted. That's how I would be if I was a player. Well, and I think it's a perfect opportunity as well, right? You have a Thursday night game, and then after that, you have more prolonged time off than usual in your anticipation from your week-to-week game preparation. And then you're going to host the Washington football team. Uh, Vic Fangio had said in his post-game press conference, there's a chance Jerry Judy plays this week. But Sarah, in my opinion, I don't think that the Broncos should. If he just now started getting back, he's got the 21-day window. I think you need to wait until he's absolutely 100% ready to come back. We saw Kadarius Tony try to come back and play through an injury, and then he ended up getting ruled out very quickly after re-aggravating it. We saw Kareem Hunt not practice all week with a calf injury, come into it, and then now there's some fear about a potential Achilles potentially for him. I We've seen this story so many times. There is no need right now to rush Jerry Judy back. However, it's the perfect week for you to finally to get John Brown, David Moore, a little bit more involved in the offense. And I just want to say, hey, mile high salute here to Kendall Hinton. I thought Kendall Hinton for the second week in a row showed a lot of grit and showed a lot of poise, especially taking some contact. He made a fantastic catch on fourth down, and luckily the officials reviewed it because they ruled it an interception, but he held on, maintained it, down by contact. Kendall Hinton, in my opinion, is a guy that man, you just love to see the heart. And look, even Justin Simmons battled his tail off in this game. Von Miller tried to, but you could just see the defeat in, in the player's body language. And when your fans are booing you off the stadium in halftime and also at the end of the game, it says a lot with the state of affairs right now. So I know Broncos country is discouraged, but look, hey, Broncos country, that's what Sarah and I are here for. We understand how frustrating it is because as analysts, as guys who watch the film, who watch the games and, and watch it, probably with as much passion as you, the fans, do we understand where you're coming from but we always try to bring a level head and and look we're not going to sugarcoat anything here on this podcast we're not going to give you any hot take bs we're going to talk about it how it is and i think that's one thing i've always appreciated about the fan base here in broncos country is that you you see the passion you see the excitement you see the anger i think it's all warranted here sir so very glad to join you here for this post game report broncos country looking forward to chatting with all of you tomorrow as we break down whether or not the broncos could be sellers at the trade deadline which is coming up we've seen some trades already around the nfl zach Ertz to the arizona cardinals and, and i tell you what the broncos they might need to get some help if they're going to have any type of hope to maybe turn things around this upcoming season. So once again, thank you so much for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. For your second listen, make sure you go check out Adam Adas and Matt Moore for the Lockdown Nuggets podcast as the Nuggets official regular season is going to be beginning here very soon. They have you covered with all the pick and roll action and the ball is popping with Adam Adas and Matt Moore, Lockdown Nuggets. But Sarah, my friend, hey, can't wait to talk Broncos football with you and the rest of Broncos country tomorrow.